Hello everyone, I'm Mansi Mathur, Assistant Professor in MERI. Let's welcome the e-learning module of Opportunistic Networks. So in the today's talk, I'm going to explain what are Opportunistic Networks and how they are in ad hoc networks. So the outline of today's talk is, we'll discuss about the introduction of uh, ad hoc networks, the challenges that comes under these networking types, then the introduction to opnets, that is the opportunistic networks, the basic differences between both of them, and, uh, and the uh, benefits of opnets, then there are some key features of opnets I'll be discussing, and, and then the applications which is based on the realistic scenarios which had already occurred with opnets. So let's start, what is an introduction to ad hoc networks? So what are ad hoc networks? They are decentralized wireless networks that can be set up on the fly without the need of pre-existing infrastructure. They can be said as a category under the infrastructure-less wireless networks or wireless sensor networks. In such networks, nodes attempt to establish a direct channel to the destination before forwarding the data. What is the purpose of ad hoc networks? Ad hoc networks are designed to provide communication and in such environments where there is no pre-existing infrastructure such as disaster stricken regions, areas or remote locations. So uh, due to this no pre-existing infrastructure, they suffer some challenges that can impact their performances and reliability. So these challenges include limited connectivity, dynamic network topology and energy constraints. So let's discuss about what is limited connectivity as a challenge in ad hoc networks. Okay, these networks often operate in environments with limited infrastructure support as we know, such as remote areas or disaster prone areas. So uh, this can result in intermittent or weak connectivity between the nodes affecting overall network performance. And then there is dynamic network topology as a challenge, so ad hoc networks are characterized by constantly changing network topology as nodes join, leave, and move within the network. These, uh, this dynamic nature makes it challenging to maintain stable and efficient communication paths between the nodes. Okay, next is energy constraints. Uh, nodes in ad hoc networks are typically battery powered and have limited energy resources. So this uh, efficient energy management is very crucial to prolong the network's lifespan and ensure uninterrupted communication between the two nodes. And however, uh, energy constraints can limit the network's capacity and introduce additional complexities. The ad hoc networks, which can be enhanced by using opportunistic networking, working, we'll discuss ahead. Okay, now what are opportunistic networks and how they are different? Opportunistic networks are a type of wireless networks that differ from the traditional ad hoc networks in how they establish and maintain connections between the device. So here is uh, a figure which explains the architecture of our opnets. Uh, you can see there is a sender, then there, there is a receiver and there are multiple nodes in between them. The message can be forwarded between sender and receiver through any of the routes uh, nodes took opportunity of. So they can also be said as opnets, which refers to the networks that are composed of mobile nodes, uh, which can be transported by either humans or vehicles, as you saw in the figure. These types of networks are unique in the sense that they do not uh, rely on pre-existing infrastructure or internet connection as ad hoc networks do. Opnets are often used in areas where there is lack of basic infrastructure or no pre-existing structure. Examples of such areas may include military environments, underwater sensor network, underwater acoustic networks, and search and rescue operations in wildlife. Then uh, the basic characteristic or a key feature of an opnet is they uh, base their on carry and forward approach. In this approach, nodes hold the messages in their buffers and pass them to the best available nodes these do not establish the end-to-end an -end path just like uh, ad hoc do, but and the messages are only transmitted uh, to each other only when it, when it is logical to do so. Then, then I'll be discussing this key differences between ad hoc and opnet. So we uh, know now what are ad hoc networks and what are opportunistic networks. So basic difference between both of them is unlike ad hoc networks which rely on availability of a continuous network infrastructure, opportunistic networks take advantage of intermittent and opportunistic connections between the devices. Uh, devices can be nodes, mobile nodes, vehicular nodes or any other kind of nodes. 
opportunistic networks are designed to operate in situations where traditional networks are not feasible or reliable, such as in remote areas, disaster-stricken areas, or crowded events with a limited network capacity. <laughs> okay, so the benefits of using opnets over uh, ad hoc is uh, they in provide improved connectivity. How the connectivity is improved? By leveraging the multiple communication technologies and allowing devices to connect it in decentralized manner. Then further, uh, the second ban benefit of OpNet is the increased network capacity. The network capacity can be increased as devices can offload traffic to other devices and utilize idle resources more efficiently. Then the next benefit can be uh, enhanced resilience. They can adapt to challenging network conditions and continue to operate even in the absence of stable infrastructure. Then uh, I would like to tell what are the key features of opnets. The basic, I already said that, uh, the store and carry forward approach, the intermediate nodes uh, contain the message, stores the message until a suitable opportunity they found they find for forwarding the uh, messages. Then they, they, this enables the communication is disconnected or intermittent network scenarios. The next feature is opportunistic data forwarding or data dissemination, we can say. Data is opportunistically forwarded based on the availability of suitable nodes improves data delivery efficiency in dynamic and unpredicted network environments. Then there is uh, there comes the context awareness. The nodes in the opportunistic network sometimes follow the history-based rules because uh, they know the places, they know the time, they know the devices beforehand. The nodes adapt their behaviors based on the previous history encounters, your contextual information such as location, time and devices capabilities. It enhances network performance as well as network utilization. Okay, next, the applications of opnets. Okay, the opportunistic networks have various applications in the scenarios where traditional network infrastructure is limited or unavailable. They can be particularly useful in the following areas. First is disaster response. During a natural disaster or an emergency, traditional communication network may be disrupted. So, in that case, opportunistic networks can be used to, to establish the communication among the first responders, the volunteers, and the affected individuals, enabling the coordination and information sharing. Then the next uh, application is wildlife monitoring. Uh, in remote areas or wildlife habitats, traditional, infra uh, traditional network infrastructure may be limited. So, opportunistic networks can be designed or deployed to collect data from the sensors and monitoring devices, allowing researchers to track and study wildlife populations and their behavior. And then uh, the next application comes is remote areas with limited infrastructure. In rural or remote areas with limited access with, uh, to traditional networks, opportunistic networks can provide connectivity by leveraging the mobile devices and ad hoc connections. This enables communication, access to information, and uh, delivery of essential services. Now, we'll, we'll be discussing about the case studies, the realistic projects I was talking about. Various real-life applications have been implemented in OpNet, such as uh, the first example is wildlife, uh, wildlife monitoring. Its main purpose to track the wild species to have us knowledge about their behavior and to study uh, their interactions with each other. These systems have special sensors to sense the behavior uh, of the animals. One of the example is, and the uh, most uh, popular example is ZebraNet. ZebraNet, it is a project based upon this. It, in this project, ZebraNet is the category of the animal, zebras is the other category of the animals that needs to be tracked. Uh, another similar example of this is uh, shared wireless infestation model which is abbreviated as SWIM. Here, whales are the wild species to be tracked and studied. Next is rural areas networking, uh, which in the remote areas with limited infrastructure. In this, this is for providing internet facilities to the rural areas. So, uh, the first example is DACnet. DACnet project is an example of this. Uh, here, hubs are built up in villages. DACnet can also support emails, video messages, audio messages, and e-commerce. Another example, another project we can say is SAMI Network Connectivity, which is abbreviated as SNC, to provide a network facilities to SAMI population. Uh, 
then next is how we can enhance ad hoc networks with opportunistic networking before discussing this i would like to uh, tell you some challenges which is uh, due to the dynamic nature of the network topology so to in order to uh, uh, tackle this uh, we we can use the opportunistic network technologies they are or techniques which enable the devices to communicate even in the absence of continuous end to end path leveraging the inter intermittent connections which can be said as the benefit of using opportunistic networks in this uh, challenge which can be said as improved connectivity then there is a typical uh, have typically have limited or less bandwidth which can lead to congestion and reduced network performance so for that if we use opportunistic networks in for this limited limitation it can be uh, enhanced bandwidth utilization by utilizing multiple paths and leveraging opportunistic encounters opportunistic networking can improve the overall network bandwidth utilization and the last uh, challenge of ad hoc network is they are characterized by frequent changes in network topology making it challenging to establish and maintain stable routes so if we include the opportunistic networking with such networks we can have adaptive routing opportunistic networking techniques can dynamically adapt to the changes in the network topology ensuring efficient routing even in highly dynamic environments so that's all for today thank you